In my 14 years as a 3D artist, I've witnessed countless forum debates over which rendering engine is the fastest and not one credible study that actually compares them. So for my own curiosity more than anything, I decided to make this video, the top path tracers head to head, see which one's the fastest. Not realizing, of course, that this is a mammoth task that would take two years to complete. As a research assistant and I learn precisely why nobody's done a video on this. But by the end of this video, you'll learn the answer to that age old question of which rendering engine is the fastest and also why answering it isn't easy. If you click this video, I assume you care about speed, so you'll probably like Polygon. Polygon is a library of architectural textures and models that help you build beautiful buildings and exteriors faster. With add-ons for all major software and render engines, you'll spend less time clicking and more time making art. Use it with your 3D software of choice by signing up at polygon.com or by clicking the link in the description. And before we get to those juicy graphs showing which render engine is fastest at what, I need to explain how and why we tested them. First of all, let's make one thing absolutely clear. Speed does matter. It's not only responsible for what the render farm builds you, but often the quality of the artwork. Because if you're constantly waiting for noise to resolve, you'll be afforded less creative decisions in an eight hour workday than somebody using a faster engine, which makes speed just about one of the most important traits of any engine. But when you look into it, you immediately face the question of optimization. How can you test engines fairly when an expert could always optimize the settings to be faster? But the crucial part of that question is expert, which most artists are not. Engine settings are an obstacle we learn reluctantly in order to create our image. Not only that, but optimization is a time consuming act itself. It requires AB testing to see if that one optimization improves speed and at what cost to quality. And doing this for the hundreds of variables in a scene can take days, if not weeks, which is why even large studios with dedicated teams don't bother trying to optimize everything. So I believe a fair test isn't which engine could be the fastest, but which engine will be the fastest most of the time, i.e. we use default settings. But there are two settings we changed, light bounces and light clamping. Both alter the speed and quality significantly. And since each engine has different defaults, it wouldn't be fair to compare drastically different images with each other. So we set them to the same value. We also turned off caustics since its practical uses are less common and it drastically increases time. Another difficult setting was samples because there's actually no standard on what a sample is. And since getting a clean image is the point of rendering longer, this is kind of important. Now you'd think that you could eyeball them to be close, but we quickly discovered that two people will often disagree on which feels noisier. We discovered a workable solution though with the peak signal to noise ratio. This image analysis script compares an image with a ground truth clean image and then produces a noise score. This was time consuming, but it let us get consistent noise matching across each engine. Part of the test was also to see the visual differences between each engine, which by default you can't do since each engine has its own color pipeline. So we stripped away any tone mapping and grading and instead fed it through the same filmic color transform. This gave us a naked view of each render before any grading was applied. And for V-Ray, Corona and Redshift, we tested them twice. Once with the standard Brute Force GI, then again with secondary solvers. Which if you didn't know, subdivide the scene into chunks and then calculate light values for those individual chunks. It then combines it with a fast GI pass to average out to the final result. It's not practical for all production cases, but when it works, it can reduce render times by a whopping 92% with no difference in quality. So I'll show the timings for both of those, but use the fastest time for ranking. For each engine, we conducted four tests, a light bounce test, subsurface scattering test, an environment volume test, and an all rounder test. Some engines work only on GPU, others only CPU, and others that do both. And since we're using a new 3090 GPU, but a much older i7 CPU, it wouldn't be fair to compare the speeds. So we kept the timing separate between categories. And in case you weren't aware, not all engines work in every software. So we rendered Cycles, Cycles X, E-Cycles, Octane, and LuxCore in Blender. Then we exported an exact replica of the scene to 3D's Max for rendering in Redshift, V-Ray, Corona, and Arnold. And in every case, we used the recommended material shader and lamp type as research from forums. So that's why this video took longer to finish than I ever would have imagined. But if you appreciate the effort, 
hit like and subscribe to help more people find it. Anyway, let's begin. Test number one, the classic Cornell box. Basic geometry with diffuse shaders lit by an area lamp. It's simple, but it shows how quickly an engine can perform the most basic of light calculations. In the GPU category, the results were very close. The winner was Octane, followed closely by E-Cycles and Redshift, basically tying, then V-Ray, then Cycles, then Cycles X, and lagging way behind was LuxCorp. And if you're wondering why Cycles X is slower here, remember that for starters, it's in early alpha stage of development, but also the developers claim that you'll see the biggest performance increases in complex scenes, as you'll see later on. Now in the CPU rendering category, V-Ray took the win at 37 seconds, followed closely by Corona, then you need to wait seven times as long to see Cycles, and then you need to wait three times longer than that to see Arnold. But before you make any conclusions here, remember that this is the fastest of tests and therefore it has the highest margin of error. Test number two, subsurface scattering. This is the test you'd care about if you do character animation since it simulates light scattering through skin. In our test, we used a simple statue model with an SSS random walk and gloss shader and a standard three point lighting setup. There were some pretty big differences in the visual look, but they could be matched more closely by an expert. What we're really looking at is how quickly it clears up that noise. In the GPU category, the fastest was surprisingly E-Cycles, then Redshift, Cycles X and Octane basically tying for third, then V-Ray and Cycles tying for fifth, and LuxCore in last place. And interestingly, this was one test whereby Cycles was fastest not in its optics calculation, but in its CUDA calculation. Now, in the CPU tests, V-Ray really stood out over its competitors, being almost four times faster than second place, which was Arnold. Then we had Corona, Cycles X, and then Cycles. Also, in simple scenes like this, secondary solvers made little to no difference to the render times, as it's really only when there's lots of surfaces receiving bounce light that you get the benefits of secondary solvers. Test number three, environment volumetrics. This is honestly the test I cared about most, since fog and smoke add so much beauty to environments. We tested this on the classic classroom benchmark scene that you can download from blender.org with a few modifications. We took out all the lighting and materials and instead replaced it with a mid-gray diffuse shader for everything and four area lamps pointing down at the windows. And then we finally added in a large volume scatter cube over everything. In the GPU timings, Redshift surprised us by being more than four times as fast as second place, which was V-Ray. Then we had E-Cycles, then much further behind that was Cycles, then LuxCore, and then finally Octane. Cycles X was not tested here because at the time of recording at least, Volumetrics is not yet supported. In the CPU category, Corona took the win by a wide margin, followed by V-Ray, then Arnold, and then Cycles scored the absolute worst at more than 10 times that of first place. So, Blender users, it's not just you. Cycles is unreasonably slow at volumetrics. Worse so in the CPU, but not so great in GPU either. So I'm eager to see how Cycles X performs here, because as I explained in my forest cabin tutorial, the volumetrics added a lot to the beauty of the scene, but because of the insane hit to the performance, I couldn't use it for the final animation. All right, final test, the all rounder. If you only cared about one of them, this is it. Unlike the other test, this represents a much more typical scene with multiple challenges. It's got indoor and outdoor areas, textured areas, subsurface scattering, glass, high poly objects, multiple IES lamps, and HDR lighting. While the previous tests reveal specific strengths and weaknesses, I consider this ranking to be the one that really counts when choosing an engine. It's also the best test to compare visual quality with out of the box settings. To me, it demonstrates why Corona is so beloved by ArchViz artists, because it looks amazing. The glass pops, the ground reflects the way it should, the marble looks milky, the lighting feels hot, everything just looks gorgeous. Now an expert of any of these engines could probably tweak the settings to be comparable. But again, that requires time and expertise. Best bang for your buck in terms of beauty, I think Corona takes the win. But let's talk timings. In the GPU category, the winner of the big all-rounder test was V-Ray, beating out all the other engines by a considerable margin. Then we had Cycles X, nice, very promising. 
then E cycles, followed closely by redshift, then cycles, then octane, and then lux core lagged way, way, way behind. In the CPU test, V-Ray took the win again with Corona taking almost four times as long then Arnold more than twice that, and finally cycles in last place by a considerable margin. So that's the final graph. Hats off to Chaos Group, huh? For taking the win in both categories and also the second place in CPU. And if you're looking at these timings and you're thinking that you could improve them with better settings, you're right. There is no doubt in my mind that an experienced Octane artist couldn't reach the same speed as V-Ray but at the same time, an experienced V-Ray artist could also reduce their times further. So remember that these are the base speeds that you should expect before they are all reduced further through optimization. And while I'm fairly confident in the timings, I'm also aware of its faults. While the peak signal to noise ratio is the gold standard for comparing noise, two people could still disagree on which image feels noisier. One reason for this is brightness. The engine's color grading or your monitor's brightness could change how noisy something looks. Another is inconsistent noise, as different parts of the image could be noisier than the rest. And while the script will evaluate the entire image, your eye may be drawn to certain areas more depending on the composition. And the final reason is that each engine has a different noise pattern. To me, the noise in Redshift and V-Ray feels more lumpy than the rest. But does that mean I'd render more or less samples? I honestly don't know. As artists, we just tend to increase or decrease samples depending on how it feels. That said, we've spent hours looking at these images up close, and to us, they look similar enough. But considering the differences in perception, I'd say there's still a 20 to 30% margin of error. So where the timings are close, you can just assume they're tying for the same position. To me, what the tests reveal most are the strengths and weaknesses of each engine. Every engine struggled with volumetrics except Redshift and Corona. Their weaknesses, oddly enough, were complexity. Cycles X has few weaknesses so far, but we'll see once it supports volumetrics. And Lux Core, look, I don't know. I guess it kind of struggles with everything, but subsurface scattering the least. I've included a link to my website where you can see all the images and spreadsheets if you want to dig into the data more. But why, you may ask, was Caustics not tested? Well, currently, each engine processes Caustics in such wildly different ways that there's really no point in comparing the timings. I'm confident that in the next five years, as path traces become real time, we'll see volumetrics and Caustics becoming the next area of focus. But for now, it's a pretty niche feature that few people use. To understand why Caustics is such a difficult problem to solve, I've brought in someone a little more experienced. Hey there, Andrew. This is Dr. Károly Zsolnai Fehér from Two Minute Papers. Big fan of your donuts. So why is rendering Caustics so slow and difficult? Well, it is because the classic path tracing algorithm that nearly everyone uses randomly shoots millions and millions of light rays from the camera and bounces them across the scene. And unfortunately, very few of these random rays end up hitting caustics, and hence it takes a long, long time to get a smooth image. There are two effective ways to address this problem. The hard way and the easy way. The hard way is systematically finding these regions that contain caustics and trying to process them directly. There are great research papers on how to do that, but it still requires more complex rendering algorithms. But there is also the easy way. The easy way is shooting photons around from the light sources, filling the surfaces of the scene and building a database with those photons. Then, whenever we encounter the caustics, we look at nearby photons in this database for clues. This is what photon mapping does. It works really well, but it has a drawback, however. We still need a large database of photons or else our caustics will get blurry due to the lack of information and excessive averaging. Hope this helped. What a time to be alive! Thanks, Dr. Carroll. And guys, if you want to learn about the emerging technologies that make our industry, I highly recommend checking out his channel. So, caustics can be on or off. And while we wanted to include it in our tests, it would have taken too long to get the results to match, so we turned it off. The only engine that looked good with default settings was Corona. You just hit a checkbox and it works. Provided though, you're okay with quadrupling your render times because nothing is free. And you can find more tests like this in my This Week in 3D newsletter. 
It's a short weekly email of three to five discoveries that I make each week. Could be a cool tutorial, a promising looking technology, or just a collection of free resources that I find. The newsletter is free and you can sign up in the link below. And if you wanna speed up the construction of your scene, sign up for Polygon. We spend hours creating high quality textures and models so you can spend your time doing what you do best, which is making art. Sign up by clicking the link in the description. Special thanks to these rendering engines for giving us licenses to test with and also answering our pesky questions. Also, thanks to my research assistant, whose first job on this channel was learning the quirks of nine different rendering engines over the course of two years. That's it, hit subscribe if you wanna stay in the loop of 3D with artist interviews, tutorials, breakdowns, and more. I'll see you in the next video.